Now, Article 9. <laughs> Article 9 is very lengthy, so I'll allow a moment for people to read it. And then I will move into the motion. The motion for Article 9 reads, move that the town accept Laurel Drive as a public way as delineated in Article 9 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 22nd, 2015 and incorporated by the reference herein. So, I have a, I have a motion and a second. Uh, select Woman Chungalo again. This article is to accept Laurel Drive as a town public way. Laurel Drive was created in 1976 as a subdivision and approved by the planning board. The road meets the standards that were in effect at the time of its construction. There, this, there is one water shutoff valve that has not been located. Is that true still, Mike? Yes. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Um, when we did Save the Mountain in 1999 and 2000, I was told all sorts of strange things by all sorts of people. Well, I do not them. know who, who told me this, but someone did say that that street was built to considerably less than current standards, and I would like to hear from the DPW about any issues that might come up if we do in fact accept this as a public street. And I qualify this by saying that I've biked and driven that street many times and I don't see any problem. But I, I want to know from somebody who knows engineering if we're opening up any cans of worms. Mr. Klamoski, DPW Director. No, Laurel Drive today has been resurfaced. The catch basins have all been checked, inspected, and cleaned by the property owner. Uh, the road, when it was built at the time, was built to the standards. Obviously, the standards have changed over the years for subdivisions, width, and whatever else is required, berms and everything else. But when it was built, that was built to the standards. We had a viewing, the select board had a viewing of the road. They actually walked the road. I actually walked the road with them, and I found no problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Anyone good, else? Good evening. I'm Camilla Rural Police of 24 Laurel Drive. I inherited um, Laurel Drive from my father who passed away in 93 and uh, has been there a long time. There are 13 houses that are built and there are three lots that are owned by individuals that yet can be um, built on. So we are receiving taxes from this road. I have resurfaced it and as Michael had said, I had cleaned out the catch basins, I cut trees back, and I've worked very hard for the whole past year, and I would really appreciate and hope that people will be in favor of voting this in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your green card. Anyone opposed to the motion? Motion passes unanimously. Article 10. Once again, Article 10 is very lengthy. Um, I'll allow a few moments for people to read it, and then I will go into the motion.
As you will read it, you'll notice that Article 10 is similar to Article 9. <laughs> Uh, this is for Holly Road, and the motion reads, move that the town accept Holly Road as a public way as delineated in Article 10 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 22nd, 2015, and incorporated by references herein. Uh, select Woman Keegan. Motion and article has been moved and seconded. Thank you. So the main point of this article is to accept Holly Road as a public way. Um, just as a little bit of background, um, this is a petition article which was brought by the residents of Holly Road. Um, and there are some unique circumstances around the road that we'd just like to highlight. Um, Holly Road was created in 1970 as part of a subdivision that was approved by the planning board. The road has not been formally, um, formally maintained and the road is in poor condition. Uh, the town does own a right-of-way and an easement for the sewer line, and our pump station is located at the end of the road, um, and we own one of the, uh, a lot back there. Um, just to clarify, I know there was an article that ran in the, uh, in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, but it, to be clear, just because of the, the wording might have been just a little bit unintentionally misleading, um, but we want to just point out that the town has never um, maintained the road consistent with our normal policies and practices. Um, however, the town has provided patching um, to the road surface over the years um, and plowing, snow plowing. Okay. Um, there's no intent to change that practice or any uh, planned changes in that regard. So um, this is something that we really needed to confer with our town council on because of the unique circumstances surrounding this property. Um, there were some issues about title along the way and so we literally um, have been getting an update right up until today on um, the fact pattern here. So um, as a possible way forward to uh, make this a public way, uh, the town meeting vote tonight to accept, should you choose to accept this, um, the town would have 120 days where we would need to record the property interests um, in order to have a, an order of taking. So there are 14 easements. We would need a waiver from each of the property owners on the street. Um, to waive any damages from each owner to protect the town. So um, that's where we're at right now. So I guess the point is if town meeting chooses to vote to move the process forward, there are still very specific steps that would need to occur in order to make this a town uh, public way. Ed Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. Uh, what other costs are projected to be absorbed by the town in dealing with these easements? And what guarantee do we have that the road, it was built to the subdivision standards at, that were prevalent at the time? Is there any proof of that? Mike, DPW director. Mike Klamoski. Holly Road has been around a long time. I've been around just about as long as it has been. It's been built again to the standards that were in effect back then. I spoke to the person, one of the people that actually did the actual work on the road and there is a good gravel base there. We all know that the top of the road is very deteriorated, very poor shape, and it's going to need to be either resurfaced, shimmed, or stone sealed, one of the three. I have two estimates from a uh, contractor that the town uses for low bid when we do our paving for, one of them is for like 55,000 and the other one is for like 83,000, depending on what course we choose to use. If the town votes to accept this road, we could use Chapter 90 money. I believe this year's Chapter 90 money is basically spent. It's going to be too late this year, this season, to get on a paving schedule because we're entering November. Thank you. But to answer your question, um, he was more concerned about the specs at the time it was built and potential costs moving forward. There would be a slight cost, I think, to go through um, the title work and the registry of the deeds too 
if it were to pass. Kenneth Parker, 118 Mount Warner, and I have an abutment on this road. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Keegan, but I think it was within the ten, last 10 or 15 years that oil and stone were put on that road by the town uh, to maintain the road. Uh, because I remember having to scoop up piles of it that was on my lawn. Um, <laughs> it's, it does, every day, early in the morning, the sewer department goes down the road, comes up the road. Uh, the highway department has done a wonderful job over the years. It was kind of a shock to me to see, to find out that they weren't going to do it this year. Uh, it's, it's part of the town of Hatton with the sewer pumping station at the bottom, I think that the, the town needs to do this. Anyone else? Tim Nyhart, 16 Kosher Drive. You, you did mention something about town council. What is their recommendation and how long do you think all this process will take to transfer deeds and whatnot. Should it wait until springtime for that? What is town council's opinion? Joel Barr. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Joel Barr, town council. Uh, we've begun the title work. The work that's required is to create an easement. So the way these particular lots were conveyed out was that an easement was not reserved. Sometimes in, a, in building on a subdivision, a developer will put into everybody's deeds the fact that they're buying their lot subject to an easement for everybody else to pass and repass. That did not happen here. Everybody who owns a lot abutting the road owns up to the middle. So what we would do is draft an easement and then have to take an easement, <clears throat> excuse me, from each of the 14 or 15 abutters. And uh, so that's the work that needs to be done. It's actually not particularly lengthy at this point since we've um, done the lion's share of that research. So we would be preparing a, an order of taking for the select board to take the, it's one lengthy easement, but it's a bunch of takings from each individual property owner. Before uh, the select board does that, we would recommend, let me put it this way, we'd recommend the select board not vote the order of taking until we get releases from each of the property owners abutting the road waiving any claim of damages. The damages obviously would be minimal, but you never know what somebody might claim and involve the town in litigation. So we would look to have a waiver of damages signed by every single property owner along the way. So that sounds complicated, but actually, as I said, the lion's share of the work is done and so would require those final steps and then folks in town securing those um, signatures to the waivers. How much is this going to cost the town? Why wouldn't the owners along the road pay for something like that and then have that set all done and say to the town, we've done all the due diligence that we need to do and here it is. Well, then you, you asked two questions, I'm only going to answer the first. The second was, the first one is what it's going to cost. The second is why aren't the abutters handling the expense? I'm not going to address that question. Uh, in terms of the cost, I mean, I'm going to ballpark and say we have maybe on the low side, if we're lucky, three hours work, perhaps as many as um, six or eight hours work to do. Um, so that's going to be somewhere in the vicinity, let me say, of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. And then there'll be some recording fees which are not large, but wouldn't it make sense to get these authorizations from the property owners before we go through this? Is there a reason that we have to do this tonight or could it wait and be further down the process? Again, I'll answer part of that. Uh, town meeting votes to uh, make the road a public way, but that's not actually perfected until we record within the next 120 days the very property rights I was just talking about. 
So if they are not recorded within the next 120 days, the town meeting vote, the moderator uses the word dissolves, but essentially becomes ineffective. It has to be recorded and recorded within 120 days. So you can vote it tonight and either the steps I described occur within the next 120 days. If they don't, it will be as if you didn't vote and it never gets recorded. So you're saying that if um, all but one, say, of the property owners sign the easement, the thing just doesn't, it's null and void. It's, it's annulled. Um, well, so what we'd be looking to have the property owners do is sign waivers of damages. If all but one sign, it would be a decision for the select board as to whether or not uh, they want to go forward with the order of taking and assume that slight risk that that one person won't file suits. In other words, the, the waivers of damages are not essential. We recommend them, but they're not essential. Certainly, if nobody signs, we'd say forget it if two-thirds, only two-thirds sign. But if all but one sign, then it becomes a judgment call for the select board. The only document that needs to be recorded is the, the order of taking in which the town takes those easements. You can take the easements without a waiver of damages for, for the reasons I've been explaining. You want to get those waivers signed first. But if, if one or two are not signed, it's still legally possible to go forward. Whether or not the select board wants to do it is their judgment call. Ken Parker, 118 Mount Warner again. Um, we were all required when they put the sewer line in by the town to hook into the sewer line. It cost us all a lot of money to do that. Um, I think all of the residents on this road have already believed that we had at least a 10 foot side on each side of that road that we were to leave as part of the town. Uh, Mr. Bard says we own to the middle of the street. We all thought we were up to 10 feet away from the street. Uh, so I think most of us are already ready for the easement. It's just a matter of taking the signatures. Thank you. Um, Mr. Devine would like to speak and then the vote. Sometimes it's not easy to be a selectman. This evening uh, we took a vote in the selectman's office and uh, four selectmen uh, voted to support this article and I was alone of uh, the vote against. And I just kind of wanted to clarify my vote against tonight. Um, we just got done, um, Cam just talked to us about her road. She spent a tremendous amount of money for that road and it's been upgraded to what's acceptable currently. And it was accepted unanimously here tonight. That's not what we're doing with Holly Road. As a matter of fact, we're talking about spending next year $80,000, which by the way is about 20% of our chapter 90 money to upgrade that road. Just something we need to, to know. We have to understand everything that's involved with this project. Um, I, I think we should fix that road. The town should take care of that road, fix the big patches that are there right now, and I think we ought to come back to Springtown meeting and talk a little bit about doing this as a betterment. A betterment is uh, when you put a sewer line or something like that in and you ask the residents to pay for a portion of it because they're gonna be benefiting from having a brand new road there abutting their properties and certainly the town does utilize that road so I would be looking myself for a 50-50 split so if we're talking about a $78,000 investment in the road in order to bring it up to what is acceptable to everybody that lives on the road and to the taxpayers that are going to be paying for this um, if we did that as a betterment over you know a 10-year period we're asking the uh, homeowners to pay approximately $20 a month in order to have their road brought up to what what they want it to be done at I certainly don't advocate for leaving the road the way it is. I, I don't think that at all. I think we should take care of the major issues with the road today, whatever that takes to get it done. Um, and, and that is why I voted against it. And I think everybody needs to understand that as they vote this evening. That's from the Grinch, sorry. Next. Um, Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. You answered some of my questions of what the select board um, stances where I do have another question. Is there a liability to the town for damage to a private road? Um, probably the sewer department vehicles are heavier than the actual, you know, the average vehicles on the street and conceivably the town could get sued for damage to the road. Joel, do we have liability there? 
There's liability everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that was actually the, the moderator gave a perfect legal opinion right there. Um, the, the, there's really, I would say it, it's not very clear cut liability. I mean, the town is a property owner at the end of the street, they're using it for the purposes for which you would expect them to be using it. Uh, I mean, anytime, anyway, the short answer would be. Uh, essentially what the moderator said, there's always some slight risk of, of liability, and I would say here it is slight. Joan O'Connell, 16 Holly Road. I just wanted to make a few points. The first is that none of us knew until we started this petition that we own the road. We all reviewed our mortgages, and nowhere in our mortgages were we informed that we were buying property on a private road. My, my, if I wanted to try to sell my house, it would be, I'd be hard pressed to convince somebody to buy a house on a road that is deteriorated to the extent that Holly Road has deteriorated. We all pay the same amount of taxes as everyone else in the town. All the nearby streets are smooth and in good condition. I don't consider it a betterment to have a road that you can't, we, we can't drive straight down. We have to go around the holes so that we don't damage our vehicles. The town trucks go down the road and have a negative impact on the road. And there's been no patching done this year. The holes are getting bigger and bigger. So I don't consider it a betterment to have a road that is in no normal condition. And the only other point I wanted to make is that I think people need to, again, understand that we all pay the same property taxes and excise taxes as everyone else in the road, but we have probably what is, would be considered the worst road in town. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Parker again. Mr. Devine, I think that part of my taxes take care of the road in front of your house and everybody else's house in this town. And I don't see why we should be charged more for a road that we have believed for, at least in my case, 37 years belonged to the town. Uh, Deborah Levinson, 14 Holly Road. Um, Holly Road is an unusual road in town. It's very old. It is important to the town because the pumping station is at the end of it. The town trucks use it every day. People bought their homes on that road not knowing we were buying into any kind of private situation or, or anything like that. It, the town has been very unclear and has taken different points of view at different times in this process as to whether they believe it has been a private or a public road. Um, however you look at that, it has allowed the road to deteriorate over a very long period of time. It has patched it. DPW's been good. They've plowed it, I would think, in, in some parts so that they would have access for the town's good to that pumping station. So we're in an unusual situation. We are not a well-to-do group of people. This is not a private development, you know, that's suddenly asking for some special betterment of our road. We're a bunch of people who bought our, you know, bought our homes believing that the road would be maintained like any other road in town, and it hasn't been, and now it is a, it's a safety issue. And the reason for doing it now, Shell, instead of the spring, is that we're trying very hard to move this forward so that the town will patch it and so that there won't be any serious problems over the winter, either for pedestrians, vehicles, or the town plow, because that also will need to access the road. And, um, and the town does have, I, I would think, has some liability for accidents on that road, just like a, any other owner would. Um, so it's an unusual situation, and we, you know, as my neighbor said, I mean, we, we do pay our fair share of taxes and have helped to support the maintenance of roads for everyone else in this room, and we would implore you as our neighbors to help us out in this situation. Thank you. Anyone else? It's like woman Chunglo. Oh, you can go first, sir. Go ahead. Well, I just, uh, Kevin Grennan, 5 Poly Road. And I do appreciate Mr. Devine's contrarian opinion, but that was one vote. There were four votes by the selectmen, select board. 
to approve this taking. Thank you very much. Just, just to clarify that, we approved to have it bring, brought forward so that the town meeting people could vote on it. Um, that's our job. If we have a petition, then that's what we do. We bring it forward to the rest of the members so that they can have a chance to vote on it. Doesn't mean that we all agree with it. Um, I agree that we do maintain roads that are not um, owned by the town and that's because you do pay taxes and that's because we feel that you need the emergency services if an ambulance or if a uh, fire truck needs to get to your house or if the police need to get to your house then that's made available to you also um, so if you want to compare the two apples to oranges here where world peace has um, maintained it was a private de development and i think the planning board could enlighten us on what happened on Holly Road years ago, too, and I just slightly mentioned that there was some litigation um, that took place back then when that development went through. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that because I'm not privy to it, but there was other problems that happened on Holly Road uh, that the planning board took care of in court. Um, Camille World Peace has um, maintained her road um, that has always been plowed by the town but she has taken upon herself to have the engineers go through, um, do the work that needed to be done so it could be brought to town meeting uh, as the catch basins and paving the road and doing all of that. Um, so that's a little bit of a difference that we have, but we have always maintained there are other roads in town that are not owned by the town, but we do plow them because of the safety for the residents that live there. Um, so I don't want you anybody to be have a, a a problem with that because we do try to take care of everybody. Jim Maximowski, planning board. No, yeah, this time I will be speaking as a planning board. I'm not going to speak directly about the Holly Road issue. Um, Mr. Dwyer has better information than I. Um, but there are several subdivisions in town. Uh, Laurel Drive was just one, Holly Road is one, and there's one or two older ones that the Planning Board recently, um, or over the years, put it that way, has um, received subdivisions, approved them, and then when the last house went in, the developers that developed the houses basically, for a good word to say, is they flew the coop, they're gone. And the town was left holding, and the residents on those streets now have a nice street, et cetera, et cetera, built to subdivision standards, but the paperwork to convert them to a town road is lacking. We've recently changed our subdivision regulations to address that for future subdivisions. There are still about maybe three or four roads in town that we're working on getting accepted. Um, we're trying to track down either the owners or the former owners or heirs or whatever you want to call them to get those taken care of. Um, so over the next, probably the next few town meetings, you'll see a few more of these coming forward. Difference is most of these roads are still in pretty good condition and they're probably less than 15 or 20 years old, whereas Holly and Laurel are probably in the order of 35 to 40 plus years old. Um, so that's how we're addressing it from this point forward, that we're trying to make sure a subdivision is built. We have the paperwork. If the developer does leave, they already have pre-authorized the town or the planning board to bring it to town meeting once it's been completed to be accepted as a town road. So we are moving forward on that. Regarding Holly Road, I'll let Mr. Dwyer address the um, issues that uh, Mr. Chung was talking about. Thank you, Jim. Bill? Uh, Bill Dwyer, also from the Planning Board. Um, so, in a nutshell, uh, Holly Road presents a unique circumstance. Uh, it is not going to come up again. Uh, it came, it, it, this initiated in 1970. Uh, believe it or not, nobody who was on the Planning Board then is still on the Planning Board. Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, the, the circumstances were different. Uh, the subdivision regulations were simpler. In fact, I'm not even sure if we had some. I think uh, Dr. Zagrodnik uh, prepared subdivision regulations when he got on the planning board shortly after. So uh, it was a little wild west at the time. I understand, as uh, Ms. Ms. Chungalo alluded, that there was some litigation. Um, it's uh, 1970 approval, so we're 45 years beyond it. It was approved, the plan was signed in October of 1970, so timely. Um, the planning board had a joint meeting with the select board. We did resolve that there, this was not going to be setting any precedent. We have no other roads that are in this group that have these issues. Um, and in the big scheme of things, it's probably best just to go ahead and accept it. Thank you. Seeing no more questions? Absolutely. All in favor of article number 10, please signify with your green card. All opposed? We have one Two opposed, so that is 106 yes, two opposed. Three? Okay. 105 to three then.